Today I'm feeling like sharing a story <laughs> that's connecting some dots on using your intuition in your business and how it may likely save you. Now, as I share this story, there is absolutely nothing negative about any parties mentioned in the story. It's literally just a story and I want to share with you how it came to be that I connected the dots on all these things. And in that, my intention is that you're gonna pick up on some codes and some practices that I do and my husband Ryan does on a daily practice, which has brought us a lot of success and opportunities over the years. So let's get started. When I am looking to find something to listen to or watch, nine times out of 10, I ask the universe. Yep, I ask the universe. Because I really don't listen to a lot of podcasts anymore or watch a lot of YouTubes anymore. I'm very selective on the content I consume. And this is something that I talk about a lot in my content and I walk the walk, I practice what I preach, I show up in terms of what I teach and it's not just BS that I'm like spewing out into the ethers, right? So I was running some errands a few weeks ago. I was up in Homestead and I was at the Walmart and I was needed to go from the Walmart to the Target, which is about a few miles, let's say 10 minutes in the car. And I thought, you know what? Let's see what comes up in my YouTube feed. So I put out there, literally put out there, I was like, gosh, you know, it would be really cool to see some type of business podcast or something that I can learn from today. <laughs> so what ended up in my feed was a podcast called Founder that I'd never heard of before and it's spelled F-O-U-N-D-R. And a pretty big podcast, over 200,000 subscribers. And the podcast that was in my feed was about a woman who had created a $100 million soda pop business from her kitchen. And I was like, wow, that is so cool, kudos. And I was curious about what that was, right? So I started listening to the podcast and it's about a drink in a can called Poppy, Poppy Soda. And she refers to it a lot as soda with like this nostalgic vibe. So honestly, I had never heard of it before. And what was so crazy was, is my husband and I are big Celsius drinkers. Look at, I have one right here. We are Celsius drinkers. My husband also drinks flavored tonic water. Um, in the past, we've drank, he's drank really on it, um, which you have to order online. But you know, we're, we're pretty familiar with the drink market, but we're not like super savvy. And I had never heard of Poppy, just kind of wild. So I was like, wow, that's really amazing. I've never heard of this drink. So I'm listening to the podcast and I get up to Target. So literally, I'm only about 10 minutes into the podcast. I park my car, I walk into Target, and wouldn't you know what is right there? Poppy. <laughs> Hello, red car syndrome, right? If you've heard any of those like stories where coaches give like manifestation tips, they'll say, oh, you'll see a red car everywhere once you want a red car, right? So there you go. Poppy was like smack in my face the second I walked into Target. Kudos Target, Target, Target and their product placement. But what I noticed was around the rim of the can, I noticed it immediately. It said four or five grams of sugar. So some cans said four grams, some, gram, some cans said five grams of sugar. And I was like, how is a healthy drink saying that it has sugar? So the part of the podcast I had heard already was that this was a healthy drink. And I am someone who actually used to make kombucha tea in my kitchen for many, many years. So I knew what she had created in essence because I used to do that. I used to make kombucha tea. I had the huge mason jars and the scobies and I switched it out and I did that forever. And let me tell you, there's sugar in that kombucha tea. Now, supposedly it ferments and it 
you could say it transforms, but I don't know. Do you really know if you're making it in your kitchen, really? I didn't really worry about it at the time. And um, I had had flavored ones, like if I went to like someone's retreat or yoga studio. And I personally, I just like mine the best. I thought that how mine turned out was better than other flavors. I just liked it, it's fine. And I had actually never, ever, ever seen a health benefit from drinking my kombucha tea. It was literally just all in my head. Literally just all in my head. So in 2020, I actually went cold turkey and threw away down the sink, Scooby things, Scooby things, whatever you wanna call them, in the garbage, cleaned out the jars, cold turkey and stopped all the tea making because I had decided to finally release weight and joined a weight loss program, okay? So here's the kicker. In the weight loss program, you are not allowed to have any sugar and hardly any carbs. Like the little bit of trace carbs is actually like in their food, but outside of that, zero carbs and zero sugar. So I have had a lot of experience with kombucha tea, because I made it myself for years, and then also what it requires for you to actually lose weight, to become healthy, as you could say, and lose weight. And that is, again, zero sugar, zero carbs. Why? Because your body has to go into a state of ketosis in order to really lose the weight that has been on your body for years. And that is what I learned. That is how I lost over 40 pounds within three and a half months. It is literally just science. So I'm looking at these cans in Target and I'm like, okay, how is this healthy? I don't get it. I mean, the cans are kind of cool. Like, but again, I buy flavored water for my husband and those are fun, colorful, cans and bottles like eh. and flavored water has like again zero sugar celsius has zero sugar and is packed with vitamins so i'm like how is this poppy drink healthy i don't get it i really don't get it so i also noticed that it's the same price as celsius so why would i pay money for this drink that's actually not healthy I don't believe it. And it's the same amount as our healthy drink Celsius and a lot more expensive than flavored tonic water. So I get back in my car, right? So I'm like, okay, well, good for her. That's great, whatever. She is a genius in finding white space within red space. And that's something that I truly believe is important for people in terms of finding a niche. So a lot of business coaches and online coaches and people on LinkedIn and all over the freaking world, right? Niche, 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 niche. Well, niching is not just that you think that you should pick something. I saw someone on LinkedIn saying that you should pick something that you know is gonna make money. <sighs> Kiss of death, please don't do that. You have to find out what you are the master in, what you know that you can do from your heart, from your passion, from your knowing that you have a skill set in. And then it's the white space within the red ocean. So she is a genius in making her drinks in her kitchen. She obviously loved it. She created it. She did really well. She sold the farmer's markets. And then at the time in 2020, there wasn't a very crowded space yet in this market. So as I got back into my car, I like continued to listen to the podcast because now I'm fascinated. I'm like, how is this drink like so popular? I literally don't get it. I started listening to it more and more. Well, she's marketing to Gen Z's. Okay, I'm a Gen X. So been around the block. Again, made my own kombucha tea. Lost weight after so many years of being fluffy 
totally know you have to cut out sugar and not have any for your body to go into ketosis. So you actually lose the pounds that have been sitting on your body for a long time. So I'm not her customer, totally fine. And I think she's like young, like in her 30s or 40s maybe. So I'm 53, so I'm definitely older than her. Again, she's going for a younger customer than her own age and I'm older, so fine. I'm just not her audience, I'm not her customer, all good. But as I came to listen more and more to the podcast episode, so by now I think I'm about halfway in, she's talking about how the only time that she's really gotten in a big fight with her husband, who's her business partner, is because this person, after they won an award at a food and beverage show, told them they should add some sugar. And her husband agreed, and she did not agree. She did not agree to adding sugar. She said, really wouldn't it be healthy? Now in the podcast, she's spinning it to talk about looking at data and listening to other people and being adaptable to change, which is totally cool. I do agree with that. You need to be balanced between your intuition and your data. And the founder um, podcast host had said the same thing. So I actually just talked about this in my uh, last video with my husband in terms of data and using your intuition in terms of balance. So yes, you need balance and I've always been balanced and I talked about this for a long time, but something bothered her. Something was hitting her intuition about adding sugar. So I come home, I'm sharing the story with my husband. He also has never heard of Poppy. He also never heard of it. He's the one that found Celsius. He also had never heard of Poppy. He's like, what are you talking about? So I go to her Instagram. She has over 400,000 uh, followers. It is, it's very Gen Z. It's just very fun. Um, great, great marketing, kudos. It's not me. It's not like an authentic type thing, even though they're kind of marketing themselves that they're authentic, but it's, it's just fun. It's just a fun Instagram feed, all good. But it wouldn't leave me. It just wouldn't leave me. I was like, something is wrong with this story. Something is wrong with this story with the sugar. <laughs> it just wouldn't leave me. Kept hitting my intuition. And the difference between your intuition and just 3D normal thoughts is when you're literally not thinking about it, like you're doing something else, um, you're working something else, you're just doing anything really. And all of a sudden the thoughts come into your head. Those are like the downloads that people talk about. So it kept coming to me. I'm like, okay, I'm not really not trying to talk, think about poppy hair. Like I'm, I'm really not. <laughs> and I was like, Google it, Google it, Google it. So finally I'm sitting at the kitchen table with my husband. I'm like, God, this poppy thing just won't leave me alone. I'm like, I need to Google it and really look at the ingredients. So sure as shit, I Googled it. What popped up right away? She's getting sued. She's getting sued. So in June, early June, late May, sometime around there, but there's like big article from June 11th. There's subsequent articles. She's getting sued for false claims. Yes. So here you go. Here's your intuition. Your intuition was that mm, it's not really healthy if I add all this sugar. And the claims even go on to talk about like the probiotic nature in the can and does it really have that many um, you know, uh, properties to have that claim, which I agree with because again, I made kombucha tea in my kitchen and never, ever, ever got a health benefit from it. I just drank it because I thought it was healthy. Marketing. So they got some good marketing for this poppy, right? To do over a hundred million dollars in sales. Number one drink on Amazon, I think she said, right? But at the end of the day, there's likely no health benefits. You're better to drink Celsius or sugar-free Gatorade, sugar-free Powerade. We've drank those things before. I have a whole case of it over there. It's good for you. Fills you with your electrolytes. So it was very fascinating because then I was like, oh, there we go. There's another breadcrumb. 
she's actually getting sued for false claims. And it's something that is actually near and dear, I don't know if that's the right way to put it, to my husband and I's heart because my husband was laid off from his job after I was laid off from mine in 2009. I was one of 70 that got laid off during the recession. After three rounds of layoffs, my round that I was laid off in was total pay grades. They just chopped pay grades and then they called me a year later and asked me to come back. <laughs> I was like, nope, I already moved to the Keys, I'm good. I already became a sales rep, I'm good. But my husband, when he was laid off in June 2009, it was after his company, which was a co-packer for Airborne, got sued for false claims. Airborne was sued for false claims because it always was marketing that it prevented the common cold. And they got sued. So the hus so my husband was a co-packer at a company that put together and manufactured and processed and shipped out Airborne. And then he was laid off. So I totally understand what it's like to be involved with a company that's making false claims. You have to follow your intuition. You have to understand what anxiety feels like in your body and that anxiety is a tool. It's a tool from God. It's a tool from the universe. It's a tool to make you like look at something. Am I making the wrong turn? But society and the narratives are trying to shut down that emotion. They're trying to shut down that emotion. Whether it's social media content that's telling you to like, oh, ignore your ignore a trigger, a trigger's bad, no, trigger is good. Or whether it's a therapist that's giving you white pills so you can be more calm and not have anxiety. But if you really just took a few minutes and tried to understand why you have the anxiety, it could be that you're not listening to your intuition and your higher self is trying to guide you in the right direction. So I just packed a ton into this YouTube video that is showing 17 minutes and 30 seconds right now. But I hope you learn something. Learn something about health. Learn something about weight loss. Learn something about anxiety. Learn something about businesses and using your intuition. And also learn something about marketing. Like you cannot believe what everyone is, is marketing to be true. Like literally you cannot. And you get sucked into shiny objects and fancy um, Instagrams and fancy packaging. Do some more research. Do some more research so you can make an educated decision. And if you need some help on your life, your business, check out my website, melindavanfleet.com. The Work Together page is always updated with how I work with people in terms of offers. And reach out if you wish to schedule. Bye for now.